Simplifying Parallel Pipeline Creation in Jenkins. In the past, you've probably created declarative Jenkins files that run your stages in parallel. However, did you know that there is another way to create those parallel stages without you having to create them all manually? That is what Matrix is for. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent, and I also have a Mac OS-based agent. For both of these agents, each have multiple labels for Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. If we take a look back over at Mac, we'll see the same variation. Down in the description is a link to a sample repository that contains the links to the documentation and all of the Jenkins files that we're going to be looking at in this video. So first off, let's go and take a look at the documentation for Matrix. And much like Parallel, Matrix is defined at the same level. So when we define a stage, we can give it steps, which you're used to, stages, if you're using sequential stages, Parallel, and now Matrix. And if we go ahead and scroll down, what we're going to be passing into Matrix are axes. And we can define numerous axis entries. In our first example, we're going to be just defining one axis. In our next example, we'll be defining multiple axes. Let's go over and take a look at our first Jenkins file. Now you'll notice what we have here is I have a Jenkins file one with a matrix and a parallel version of that, same for Jenkins file two and three. So let's first take a look at what we're gonna be doing parallel. And this is a fairly straightforward example to where I'm gonna run in parallel on Mac OS and on Linux, and I'm gonna be running multiple stages within that job. So let's go ahead and go over to our controller I already have the job set up pointing at that Jenkins file. Let's go and click on build now. And first off, let's watch what happens within the console output. We'll see that Mac OS and Linux are both referenced here. So all of this looks pretty straightforward. If we take a look at the view here, we can see build and test, Mac OS, Linux, build test, build test but this visualization doesn't help us out a whole lot. So if we go take a look at it over in Blue Ocean, what we're going to see is that we have two parallel stages running with multiple stages within that stage. So if you're used to working with sequential stages, this looks familiar to you. If not, this is a way to where you can have multiple stages run within a single stage. Now taking a look again at our definition, fairly straightforward. We've got parallel, a stage that runs the same code, and also another stage that runs the same code. Now let's simplify this with matrix. So let's go back over to our example and go to Jenkins file one matrix. And what we're going to see right off the bat is it's a lot shorter. Instead of defining parallel at the top of the stage, we're defining matrix. And when we define this agent, once the axes kick in and expand, then what's going to happen is we're going to have a label of Linux and a label of Mac OS, which are the default labels for each of our agents. And then on both of those agents, we're going to be running the same commands. So in this case, our Jenkins file is 30 lines long. Back at our parallel, it is 39 lines, so we're saving nine lines of our Jenkins file. Let's go over and run our matrix job. So we'll go back over here. We'll go to matrix, again, already predefined. We'll click on build now. And let's just watch the stage view. Notice how this is rendering just a little bit differently. Instead of it just saying Linux and Mac OS and then build, test, build, test, we now have this matrix platform equals Linux. If we go take a look at this over in our Blue Ocean rendering, then what we're going to see is it looks exactly the same, except instead of it just saying Linux and Mac OS, it now has that matrix information that we saw over in the console output. If you take a look at the console output, we can see that it's creating branches. So it's creating something with Linux and Mac OS. The end result is the same, but it saved us nine lines of definition within our Jenkins file. 
Now let's assume for a moment that I'm wanting to go ahead and run a tool such as Selenium or Playwright, and I'm wanting to run these tests on both Mac OS and on Linux for Chrome, for Firefox, and for Safari. So in the first case, we had two jobs run. By mixing in these three extras, I'm now going to have six. I'm going to have three for Linux and three for Mac for a total of six. So if we go and take a look at our definition for Jenkins File 2 Parallel. Again, nothing real exciting here if you're used to working with Parallel. I have an agent that's going to be Mac OS Chrome, Mac OS Firefox, Mac OS Safari. Same thing for Linux, for Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Darren, wait, you can't run Safari on Linux. Hold that thought. We'll come back to that. But what you'll see right now is we are up to 99 lines in our Jenkins file definition. Let's go over and run our parallel job. But before we run it, let's go ahead and reconfigure it to run that specific Jenkins file. So this is Jenkins file dash two parallel. Click on save and click on build now. Let's watch the console output first. What we can see is that we now have six branches that are being created for us. And it's going through and creating all of this out. No problem. Pretty simple because we defined all of this, all 99 lines of this job definition. In fact, if we go ahead and take a look at Blue Ocean, what we'll see is we have the six branches running within our job. Everything works. These aren't doing anything real right now. That's OK. What we're trying to do is construct our pipeline in such a way that you can see what can be done. Now, this is parallel. Let's go and take a look at the variation of this that is matrix. Let's go back into our job definition, and we'll go to Jenkins file to matrix. And what you're going to see here is we've defined a new axis called browser. We still have our axis called platform. So by default, what it's going to do is it's going to combine all of these together to come up with the six. Notice how we have defined our label. Our label is platform-browser. Thinking back to the beginning of the video when we showed how our agents are set up. They have the platform and they have the browser tag on both of our agents. Notice though, instead of it being 99 lines long, we're at 34 lines long. We've only added a couple of lines because we've only added in the lines from the previous example just this new axis for browser. Let's go back over to our controller. Let's modify our matrix job and change that to Jenkins file dash two matrix. And build now. What we're going to see here is here are all of our different branches that are being created for us. We have our matrix platform Linux and Chrome, Mac OS and Chrome, and so on. All the output from this, that's good. If we take a look at Blue Ocean, everything again looks exactly the same except for the name for matrix right here on the beginning of this run. And if you think about it, our Jenkins file for parallel was 99 lines long. With matrix, it's only 34 lines for the exact same job output. Now let's go back to what we were talking about during this second example. I've got Mac and Linux, and I've got Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. But Safari is not a valid browser for Linux. So how do we handle that? Well, in our example, if we were to take a look at our Jenkins File 3 parallel, it looks exactly the same as Jenkins File 2 parallel, except we have taken out the stage block that was Linux-Safari. So just basically remove that out. And our line count has gone from 99 down to 84. OK, so we've lost a few lines. That's good. If we go ahead and set up this job and run in parallel, let's go back over to our parallel job. Configure. Let's change this to 3. And click on Build Now. What we're going to see here is the different branches. Notice that we don't have a Linux dash 
Safari anymore because we removed that stage block from our definition. If we take a look at the output of Blue Ocean, now instead of having six, we only have five, again, because we have hard-coded all five of those stages. All of this is as expected. Let's go take a look at our definition for this for matrix. So if we take a look at Jenkins file three dash matrix, what we're going to see is a new block called excludes. And with excludes, what we're saying is, I want to exclude Linux and Safari. So that combination together, I want to exclude. Now this job has now ballooned, if you will, up to 46 lines, but still much less than the 80 some odd lines that we saw with the parallel version of this. So let's go back over to our controller. Let's change the job for matrix to run dash three. When we click on build now, what we're going to see from the console output is that when it's generating this combination, we only have five. We have two Linuxes and three Mac OS, which is what we'd expect when we did that exclusion for Linux and Safari. If we click over to Blue Ocean, again, we still have a successful run of all five stages. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.